Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, what I want to talk to you today about is really about video and how can we unlock insights um, from video. Video now is ubiquitous. It's absolutely everywhere. We only have to look at our daily lives and we spend time scrolling through Snapchat feeds, Instagram feeds, Periscope live, live, live streams, whatever it may be. And as, as researchers, video is something that we can really be leveraging. By 2020, 83% of all data going across the internet will be video content. And if we look at something like Snapchat, 10 billion videos are watched every single day on that platform. It's just, it's, it's everywhere. So how, as researchers, can we leverage this, this phenomenon? How can we take the way that respondents are engaging with video and use that to enhance things? Technology has changed the game. Mobile devices, you know, everyone has two, three, four devices, tablets, smartphones, laptops, all with, with cameras in. So just to introduce myself and talk a little about, bit about why myself and, and Ben are kind of uh, able to talk on this topic. Um, I'm the founder of Vox.me, who um, is a company that specializes in video, and we've been, we've been doing this now for four years. Um, I've got a lot of experience in the technology sector, and what we really wanted to do was build a platform that, that removed that pain barrier from video. Over the last four years, we've, we've captured and processed over a million consumer videos on a whole wide of different topics and subjects. And the screen's now disappeared. But Ben, you can talk a little bit about yourself. <laughs> Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Ben Gilgaf. Um, I am the leader of primary care uh, market research at uh, Merck, which covers a lot of uh, different therapeutic areas, respiratory, women's health, uh, diabetes, cardiovascular. And it's a pleasure to be here today. Just a reminder, um, the comments today are my own views expressly. <laughs> Thanks for that disclaimer. So we've done a lot of research, and one thing we know about video is it's an undeniably powerful storyteller. You know, the, both of the first two pr presentations were talking about emotion, and emotion plays such a big, big role in things. You know, you know the facts. You know, without you know, just the facts aren't, aren't good enough anymore. So, how can we use video to become that kind of powerful storytelling, telling message? Previously, video. You know, many of you have probably sat through hours and hours of video footage, tried to compile a, a, a story, had to send that off to someone to process that. That for you, invariably, it comes back. It's wrong. There's a round of amends. Another week goes by, and um, you know, it's just a very, very cumbersome cumbersome medium. And often, this is kind of how we end up when, when, when dealing with, with video projects, kind of just in a mess, basically, surrounded by lots of, lots of content. So we wanted to address this and come at this in a lot, number of different, different ways. So we see there's three stages to video. First, you've got to capture it. Then you need to analyze it. And then finally, you need to share it. So, when capturing video, a number of number of challenges have been have been overcome. You know, now we all have HD video cameras in our pocket. You know, the smartphone penetration is is absolutely huge. The solution we came up with is to enable video capture from within any survey solution. So, the technology can be dropped into any uh, survey platform, Decipher, Confirm it, Qualtrics, Vision Critical Communities, whatever, whatever it is that you're using to collect data. And the benefit here is allowing consumers to tell their story in their own words, being able to capture that emotion in the moment. What we do know is when consumers are asked to record a video, they'll typically share six to eight times more information than if you just ask them to type into that open-end text box. So we're already getting richer, deeper insights. When it comes to analyzing video, that's been a, a real pain point for people pr previously. The, the time taken to sit and to watch hours and hours of video, video footage, to find that story, to find that rich insight, has been extremely time consuming. So what we've developed is technology that will uh, enable that video to be analyzed. Videos are transcribed within minutes. They're coded by themes automatically. They're, they're time coded. 
And we've actually just uh, launched a partnership with Affectiva to bring that emotional analytics layer in, so bringing facial coding into this video content as well. So not, being, not just searching on what per the person's saying, but also looking at that emotions as they're, as they're coming across. And, and this searchable content makes finding that insight and finding that story so, so much faster. And then finally, why capture video if we're just going to keep it kind of locked away in a, in a vault? The whole purpose of a of, of video is to be able to get it out there. Such a powerful medium for engaging executives, for getting people on board with the story. Back to this emotion, you know, a lot of presentations and, and, and decks will talk to the rational side of the data. You know, this, this is why, this is why, here's the facts. What video does, it brings that consumer to life. It lets them tell it in their own words and engages more, more people. So what we've really tried to do here is, 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 is make video editing available to everybody. As simple as highlighting, click, select what you want, no kind of complicated editing. So something that can really make, make creating video minutes worth of work. So I want to hand over to Ben at this point, who's going to talk through more from, from a, ben, a client's perspective as to how video has changed the way he works. Thanks, Dave. So if, if you take a look at the information that Dave just presented, the, the facts are undeniable about where we're going with video. Um, and the reality of it is that we learn in story, right? So uh, that's, that's how we learn. Um, just to kind of get a little bit of a gauge on the audience, how many people um, here are currently using video in their presentations? Okay. <laughs> So I think, I think that's, a good, that's a good telltale sign, because it's certainly gone up from last year. Um, and the benefits of using video are, are multi, multifactorial. But the reality of it is that um, clients, our clients, are sitting through so much information, right? They're sitting through a lot of presentations. They've got data from coming in and at them from every single aspect. And they're trying to make sense of it all, right? And so the, that's exactly what video does. I always talk a little bit about the tension, the healthy tension between marketers and market research, right? Don't, don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not the only one. Um, so there's a very healthy tension there. And part of that is about credibility. How many people have done uh, a quant study in, uh, in last year and had a client look at it and say, I don't believe these results? Okay. I'm not so sure that we have full, full admittance there, but uh, <laughs> I, I, would, I would wager that it's a little bit higher than that. Um, it's okay. We're all in a state of denial on different things. That's okay. We'll work it out. Um, so the reality of it is, is that we work very hard, right? Whether you're doing a tracker, uh, you know, ATUs, uh, you know, big forecasting studies, we go out and we kill ourselves, right? We're getting you know, hundreds and hundreds of people in, and two weeks' time, and analyzing it, and the top line, and we got to make this decision. And then we're sitting in a room, and we're presenting to our clients, and the client just looks at it and says, I don't believe it. And so you're sitting there, and you're saying, well, it, it doesn't really matter if you believe it. Factually, this is statistically significant versus the other alternative. And then they will say, in all honesty, they will look at you, and they will say, I don't care. I still don't believe it. And so the way around that, right, is to try and explain it a little bit more with video. And so if you have a credibility issue, or even if you don't have a credibility issue, everybody wants to be more co customer focused today, right? So that's really all of our jobs is bringing the customers into our organizations. But the reality of it is if you have a video clip, and it doesn't have to be a long clip. Most of the videos uh, that I've seen are, are small, short, like one minute or less segments. It explains the findings in a very credible way. So you jump over all the resistance, all the organizational you know, inertia, and you kind of depersonalize it. It's all of a sudden not about your study and about their theory, right? It's about what does the customer have to say and why is that uh, really what happened in the study? So you save time, you save your credibility, you also save kind of this you know, uh, back and forth with your marketing clients who are unhappy because they can't understand it. And a very interesting thing happens when you start using it in that way. All of a sudden, they become evangelists of the video, right? Because then their next level management says, I don't believe it. And then they say, OK, well, here's why. And they look great doing it. Um, so there's a lot of good application uh, for it. The, the, other, the other thing is that uh, you know my team is guilty of this, but 
you know, the slide, the slide decks, they're never ending, right? The slide decks just keep coming and coming and coming. They're never ending. And so if you get tired of looking at graphs and slides, you've got to have something else in your arsenal. And there's a lot of things that I think are available now. Um, you know, and, and video, but video in this way is, is much, uh, is something that really should be, should be thought about. So, okay, well, where, where should we put this, right? And, and maybe, maybe it's time to start using it in places that we don't use it. How many people have multi-year ATU studies going on? There's more than that in here. I know everyone's got ATU in the budget somewhere. We all have to accept it. So, ATUs that have been going on for years and years and years, I mean, we need to kick these things around a little bit, right? And how do you do that? Well, video is one way. It's not, you know, people go to an ATU study, they're not necessarily expecting video from it, which makes it great. But it also refreshes it. There's been so many conference topics about, you know, how to make sexy ATUs, right? Has anybody gone to those conferences? <laughs> I have. I'm still working on making mine sexy. It's not that easy. It takes a lot of work. Um, but video might be one way to kind of spruce it up and, and dust it off and, and kick it up. The other thing I like about video too is that it makes sure the respondents are kind of like paying attention, right? So like if they're just sitting around, you know, in their like, you know, gym shorts, right? And all of a sudden they, they've got to like shoot a video. Like all of a sudden like something happens there, right? The engagement level in the survey kind of get, kicks into a different gear. So I like that, and I want to I make sure that they're kind of paying attention and not just answering A after every single, every single question. So messaging and tracking stu studies, right? These studies can also be like the bane of our existence, not very exciting, same messages over and over. And it's good to hear kind of a, a twist on why people are saying what they're saying. Nothing beats kind of a rational explanation. For, I put forecasting studies in here because it's, it's kind of something that you probably wouldn't expect. But forecasting studies are controversial just in their own right. You know, we haven't gotten a forecast right in three years. How do you know that this study is right? And so you really need that kind of extra um, explanation to, to put credibility into your work and also to give people the confidence to move it forward. So although you might not be thinking about it in a forecasting study, I would, I would argue that it definitely has a place there especially for something that's going to be controversial, and especially because, you know, forecasting studies tend to get overloaded pretty quick, right? I mean, we want to see every single variation of what we're testing, right? And it becomes very dry. So another way to both simultaneously engage people and also give your work credibility. How about copy testing? Video's got a place in copy testing too. I mean, a lot of the copy testing that, that's done, um, you know, you can have video uh, in there integrated, but the reality of it is I feel like we do qual, and then we get into the quant, and then we, it's like, okay, which one of these is, uh, which one of these are we hitting with the shovel, and which one of these is moving forward, right? So if you get a little bit of video with it, then it gets some credibility. And it, I think the other thing too is that we kind of give up on qual at certain points because we don't have time to do it, right? So if you're busy analyzing all this data from a quant, you know, that's where your time and, and mind space is. It's not on, you know, getting additional qual at that point. You did the qual already. Now you're getting down to brass tacks, right? So I, I would say free your mind from that kind of thinking and really um, try to expand it a little bit and, and think about video, in, especially in places, and there's probably, you know, a lot more than just these areas that you could probably integrate it into. But I would challenge you to think of places, especially where you, may think about it and say, you know what, it doesn't belong there. Uh, I would ask you to think about it and revisit it because you could be surprised. But more importantly, uh, I think what it can do for you um, in terms of how hard it works will be surprising to you. Definitely. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, that has been one of the biggest learnings for us over the last two years is just the diverse ways in which clients are implementing videos into their study. So, you know, as Ben said, you know, a lot of these are large traditional quant style studies. The ability to do hybrid quant qual research now has been powerful because too many times these quant studies just give us the what, and with video we can really dig into that, into that why. We're also looking to enrich that respondent's journey. Um, just incentivizing respondents to do things is no longer enough. It's, it's not, um, we can't perpetuate based on just incentives. There's so much um, survey fatigue and you know, we talk consistently 
I've been coming to this conference now for four years, and every year we've talked about making surveys shorter. Um, it's happening. It's, 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 it's getting there. But I think giving the respondent a way to communicate with you that's more natural, um, which, video, which video is, um, is, a, is, a, is a real, real opportunity and, and something that we should be doing, doing more of. But kind of don't really take just my word for it. Let's hear what respondents actually have to say. Or not. Video also very useful. I like that I can express exactly how I feel, say exactly what I want to say, and be able to portray my emotion when I'm saying it. I think it's, it's, it's much easier than actually completing uh, surveys uh, on the internet, uh, which are also enjoyable. It's, it's another outlet to express my, uh, my opinion, but it's more personal. I really love recording Vox Pop simply because it feels a lot more personal than doing online surveys. Sometimes they can feel very impersonal because all you're doing is just going down the list and ticking all the relevant boxes. I definitely like video more because I think it, it adds more of a human aspect to communication than just a text or a survey does. You can actually put a bit of emotion into it. So um, you can actually, certainly I think where, it, where it's better than filling out a survey is um, you can gauge, or the person viewing it can gauge my, my body language, my facial expressions, you know, and, and effectively you can, you can see how sincere someone's being. And people can gauge just from my face, my voice, my excitement or my sorrow, how I feel. So you can see there are lots of different ways that lots of different reasons why people enjoy um, recording the video. But it also challenges the status quo, and as Ben says, it helps to drive action across the organization, getting stakeholders on side and, and showing them that analytics. When surveys, 59% of executives would actually rather watch a video than, than read text. So I think, you know, bearing that in mind and thinking, how can you give them the, the Snapchat version of this insight? How can you bring that to life in, in a couple of minutes? You know, yes, they may want to have the additional data to dig into, but this is a great way, you know, it's, it's we see so much more shareability and virality of the insights with video because they're getting shared throughout the organizations. A number of our, of our clients are actually having smart boards uh, in their offices with client customer videos and customer stories coming, coming up and, and things like that, which really, you know, all brands now are trying to put the consumer at the heart of the decision-making process, and that, that visibility um, really does really does help. So, you know, and it also, you know, visualizes that, re that research as well.